everybody, and welcome to another Warlock Wednesday special. This is a special this week. We're showing, we're actually uh, going to have it on Thursday, recording Wednesday night, but air, uh, putting up on the site on Thursday on anotherpodcast.com. And if you're listening to that, you already know because you're on anotherpodcast.com. This is the NHL playoff prediction special because round two was not quite over on Monday when I did the recording for the Warlock Hour, and with me, hopefully. If this works this time, is Joey. Hello. All right. So we got Joey with us this time. We're going to do the predictions. I've uh, said his predictions on the show, but uh, it, he'll actually be able to give you his actual point of view. And, and my impression of Joey didn't come off very well the last time. So <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, I tried to do a Joey impression, but it, it, it you... really just sounded like me trying to be a Joey, which doesn't work. <laughs> That's fair. Well, I mean, I, I, I get that. Yeah. All right, so Game 7 tonight, the, the night we're recording, was uh, Detroit versus Chicago. What a game. Uh, what a series, first what of all. What a series, really, really, what Standing a series. Ovation. Standing ovation for those two teams. Absolutely. Uh, they put on a hell of a series, uh, quite a low-scoring series, generally speaking. A lot of one-goal games, but you expect that in the playoffs. And that's your Pittsburgh, then yes. Yeah, <laughs> unless you then you give up like you know six goals and you score seven. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah, th- what a great game. Uh, went to overtime, even overtime game seven. One of the, probably a most exciting part of any any playoff is like overtime game seven. You know, one shot wins the entire series. For sure. Uh, it, it just happened that this was actually a great goal. It wasn't like a cheap shot. It wasn't a fluke goal. It was a nice rifle. No, Brent Seabrook walked in, um, took a shot from the from the high slot. I think Cron- I might have hit Cronwell's skate a little bit. Could have been, yeah. Went in, yeah. But, but I mean, it was a good goal. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and the game really shouldn't have even gone to overtime, as far as I'm concerned. That that call on the that goal the was good. No, the the Jalmerson goal should have. I, I, Stephen Walking's a really good. So I'm not bagging on Walking. I I think in, as a, as a rule, the refs haven't been very good. But I don't think oh. Walking's been bad. Absolutely. I thought that he made he made the call that he thought was the right call at the time, but I mean, based it, on what had happened immediately after, it sure didn't look like a very good call. So it, it, I think it also comes down to that whole like when they wanted to blow the whistle. And yeah. It's like when the whistle actually goes. I mean, he was already in and, and shooting the puck, right? Uh, but yeah. When he the referee's thinking of blowing the whistle, that's when technically the whistle is going, is what they're saying in the replay. And it's like, okay, but how do you know that the referee was going to blow the whistle? You you play till the whistle. And, I mean, it yeah. was so loud, the whistle obviously was not heard by, by nobody. anybody. You, you couldn't yeah, no even hear it when they showed the, showed the replay. You could not hear it. No, but, actually, the only, the only people that could hear it, I think, were the Wings bench because they were – Oh yeah, they were up in totally calm. The, the Blackhawks bench didn't hear the whistle. They were celebrating like they scored. Oh, oh, and that, yeah. like, that's that's how loud it was in there. So right. I mean, it is what it is. So karma for Chicago. They should have won that game in regulation. They won it in overtime, and yeah, they're off. Yeah, they're now going to be taking on the winner of the other game seven from the Western Conference, which was the Los Angeles Kings, who eliminated the Sharks uh, in in another great game, actually. Uh, well played, I think, by both teams and well played series. I think so. so. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure why LA let San Jose hang around in the series for that long, but uh, I think, if, like, I mean, I'm not saying that home ice was uh, was a huge factor. I mean, LA's proved that they can win on the road just as well as anybody else. Uh, I think, though, that in game, I, I think it was game four when they were in San Jose, where the Kings should have won that game. Uh, yeah. That's where it kind of fell apart for them. And then uh, game six was it, it a toss up. Uh, was, didn't, didn't that would go to overtime, I think? So mm-hmm. it, it really was a toss up. And I thought the Kings could hold on and win the game, but, you know, Charlotte, San Jose tied it late, which actually they've done a lot in the, in the playoffs. They did it in the first round. They tied games late. And, yeah, yeah uh, they did. So it, it does happen, but the Kings prevailed and now they face the Blackhawks. Yeah. So oh, just out of curiosity, before we get yeah. into the predictions, do you happen to know what our overall records are so far? Yes, for the year? and I will get into that actually. Okay. Uh, so with that, the predictions are going to go. I'm going to do the dice first because I already rolled the dice. That's what took me so long to give you a, a ring ding. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, the dice went 
one and three in the second round. So they actually Yay. did a horrible job in the second round because the dice picked the Senators, the Rangers, the Red Wings, and the Kings. The only one they got right was the Kings. That's an interesting, that's an interesting set of picks for the dice there. Man. <laughs> yes, they did. So their overall record is six and six because they had a five and three first round. Well, that's not really bad. I mean, if, if yeah. you're like, that, I mean, that's pretty much what you'd expect, which is yeah. kind of funny. They're 500 in, in the first two rounds. However, they could, they could be hurting after this prediction. Their Western Conference final prediction has the Kings defeating the Blackhawks in seven games. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's theirs. Um, yeah. for me, my record after the second round, I went three and one in the second round, uh, which is a lot better than my first round totals, bringing my total up to a seven and five record. Because I went four and four in the first round. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but of the four I guessed right, three of those series were correctly guessed in the amount of games. So oh, that's pretty go. darn good. Yeah. That's pretty darn good. So I, I liked that. And my Western Conference pick. Well, I have a heart pick and a head pick. My heart says I want to see the Kings go and defend the Cup. I mean, that's that's obviously, you'd love to see the reigning Stanley Cup champions in the Stanley Cup final to defend their title. Whether yes. you win or lose, you, it, it's always nice to see that. So that that's what my heart would like to see. However, I think that um, Quick has carried them as far as he can. I still think this is a seven-game series. But I'm going to pick the Blackhawks because of that home ice advantage. And... Uh, there, it's, I think it's going to be a great series. Uh, like the Blackhawks Wings series, I think the Blackhawks and Kings are going to be just as equal to that. Yeah, I would. I think that I would agree. I would say the Hawks will take that one, and I'm going to go seven as well. Okay. Um, now, before we continue, let's get with your yeah. record. Uh, oh, yeah, right. You you went four and zero in the second round. Perfect four and zero. So oh, boy, and you got you got one series correctly guessed the amount of games, and that was the Kings in seven. Uh, mm-hmm. But you went 4-0, you had the Pens, you had the Bruins, you had the Blackhawks, and you had the Kings. Uh, your your record didn't stand where you picked against the Red Wings and they won, but it almost did. Yeah, it, it almost had worked. had a chance. So close. Uh, so your overall record is an impressive 9-3. and three. Oh, that's not bad. You went 5-3 and three in the first round as well. You and the dice tied. Uh, <laughs> so, But, uh, yeah, so your overall record, thanks to a perfect second round, is 9-3. and three. So you're going to go with the Blackhawks and 7. So talk about that while I type that in. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I mean, you're looking at the, the Kings and Hawks. I mean, the Hawks really did have a tr- trouble with the Wings, but they always play close. I mean, they've been rivals for a long time, and when they play in the season, it's always close. So it wasn't really surprising that the series was close. But what's important for the Hawks is uh, they're healthy. They have their 100% full health coming out of the seven-game series. Uh, they're deep. They're fast. They're strong. Um, they got players playing out of their heads right now that are coming out of nowhere, like guys like Nick Letty. I've seen Nick Letty lead rushes like keep end to end like three times a game. Guys like Shaw getting in the face of their opponents. Um, Crawford's been pretty good. He hasn't been yep. as soft as people probably would have expected. Yeah, he's so, been very solid. Uh, game, the series goes seven because John Quick's that good, but I mean, yeah, th- and that's Hawks that's the seven. reason why. Like I picked the Blackhawks in seven as well because I, I think Jonathan Quick is a good, great goalie, and. You add into the fact that, that the Kings are so good on home ice. I mean, yeah. and they, were, they were saying it in, the, in Game 7 that going into Game 7, they were 13-0 in their last 13 games. So now That's they're 14-0 in their last 14 home games. That's an impressive stat. Uh, so the, the key here is if the Kings can maintain that and win one against the Blackhawks in Chicago, the Kings win the series. But I still think that this could be – an exact replica of the King's Shark series where it's going to be a homer series. The home team's going to win every single game and the Blackhawks mm-hmm. are going to win that final one. I do agree though that the the defense for the Blackhawks not only are they quick, they're so balanced. I mean, you look oh, at good. you look at the times that they play other than Seabrook and um Keith. Is mm-hmm. it Keith? Yeah, Keith they they uh, play about well, 20 28 minutes. Approximately, yeah. and then it, Keith is up. Keith is usually up around thirty minutes, and then it's usually whoever they end up matching or pairing up with Keith. That's usually pretty yeah. high, but I mean, yeah. like Jalmerson's usually over twenty. Uh, Nick yeah. Letty's just been un- unbelievable for yeah. them. Exactly. And like, when, so. and then they, you know, either Oduya is playing well, or or Roosevelt stepping up and playing well. So they've they've and, always got guys playing. Experienced guys, like I mean, guys who've been there. And oh, here's another stat: 
last four Stanley Cup champions in the Final Four. Yeah, we were just I was just talking about this, actually. Um, it's been a while since we've seen this kind of domination. I was comparing it to the, uh, if you go back to the, the late 90s, early 2000s, the uh, New Jersey, Detroit, Colorado sort oh, of yeah. Yeah, those triad where always, they were winning all the They're time. always in the final, like in the conference finals, and one of them would eventually yeah. win the cup. And you can even put Dallas in there, really, because Dallas Yeah, at that time, yeah, Dallas was very dominant back then. So you have the four, so I guess that what we have now, I, we might have our new, you know, four winning teams that are just consistently going to be up at the top. And, and it's true. Like, I mean, these teams are, they're not old teams. They're, a lot of them are very young teams in, in terms of hockey go, goes. I mean, there's veterans on the team. There always is. Like, a, mm-hmm. this is a veteran, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you look at, uh, the lineups and they're, they're fairly young guys between, like, I would say mid twenties to early thirties for most of them. So they got a few yeah, years left like, in them. Yeah, I think the only team that's in danger really of losing their core. Oh man, actually none are really in danger. No, no. I mean monetary wise, when contracts start coming up, you never know that 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 is a factor that in this day yeah. in the NHL you just can't predict. But as far as like age is concerned, you're, you're not I looking think, at too many retirees in, in yeah, those four teams. Just the Bruins, because uh, they 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 have the Chara factor. So I mean, of they all do. teams, and and he's a big body, and not only that, he he plays the game very well. He like that's why he's always up for the Norris. I mean, he's such a great defenseman, yeah, and an offensive yeah. defenseman at that. So if Boston can keep it going without Chara, I mean, they'll be around for a long time. I mean, that's that's without contracts because we don't know what the landscape for contracts is going to look like in the new CBA. With because you can't do those huge back diving deals and yeah, they exactly. Get Things are change carry all and money. Contracts are are such a factor nowadays with, with free agency, with uh, salary cap, with the new CBA saying you you can't make those back end diving contracts where you sign for twelve years, but the last like three or four years you're only getting paid either in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or like a million bucks. Yeah, a million There's per year. Yeah. And you're you're getting like four to eight million, maybe more, depending on who mm-hmm. you are. Uh, it's definitely uh, very different now with the new CBA. Eight-year contracts are the limit, and that's if you sign with the same team. Yeah. So, so it's eight years, same team, seven years, free agent, so it makes it just a lot different. Yep. So, I mean, I guess really the first test is going to be, I think Evgeny Malkin's the first, the first big player to have, to go UFA with the new I CBA. Think I think you're right with that. So, so speaking of Malkin, let's move on to the Eastern yeah. Conference. So the Eastern Conference finished up with uh, the Pens and the Bruins pretty dominant in both their series. Uh, the Pens eliminated the Sens in five games. Uh, I was actually shocked that it was that quick. Uh, really? I thought, the Sen- I thought the Senators would give them a little bit more run for their money. I really did because of, because of the play of of them in the first round against the the Montreal Canadiens, who, mm-hmm. in my opinion, are still the better team. But the Senators had the goaltending of Craig Anderson, and, I, and I've always said a goaltender can steal games and steal series. And I thought Craig Anderson really stole that series, and I thought he'd steal a few more games against the Pittsburgh Penguins. You did point out that there was way more depth on Pittsburgh. And yes. that probably added to the fact that, uh, I mean, with such depth, you're always facing so many shots. I mean, you have so, you have three solid lines on Pittsburgh that can score. Yes. Um, and, and a very, very effective fourth line. And a very, and a very effective fourth line, exactly. So, But you have three scoring lines on the Pittsburgh Penguins, whereas most teams usually have their top two, and then you hope mm-hmm. to get some production out of the third and fourth line. Uh, yeah. But Pittsburgh really has three solid lines, uh, maybe not across the board, like every position, but three lines that definitely can put up points at any point in, in any game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did think that Craig Anderson could steal a, a lot more than one game. I, I really thought that was going a six-game series at least. Uh, I did pick the Senators in seven. That was... Oh, you I did? Just, you couldn't, you did. couldn't pick the Pens, eh? No, I picked... I, I can't pick the pens. I, I can't stand Crosby. I know how good he is, and I'm never going to deny his talent. Uh, he he's a, he's an excellent hockey player. I just don't like the man. I can't stand him. Uh, I don't like how he whines a lot. Like I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say that the puck to the face <laughs> made him whine. I mean, anybody would pretty much shut up when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 
It's not that. It's just the way he plays the game. I find he plays the game a, a little chippy, and then when things happen to him, he's bitching and moaning and complaining, and yet when he goes and does the exact same things, he bitches and moans and complains when he gets penalties or gets called out for it. Yeah, true story. Yeah, that I just I can't respect him. I I, I respect the talent, can't respect him. Yeah, I I'm I'm not a big Crosby fan. I, I think it's hit or miss. I think he's got a lot of fans, but I think mean, when you have a lot of fans, you're gonna have a lot of haters. A lot too. of haters. Yeah, it's true, and I think that goes with players, teams. Uh, for every, I, I've always said for a lot of times, whenever ever have a superstar, whether it be in in sports or in celebrities. For every one fan you have, you probably have one hater or more. Yeah, that's that's probably true. So, I mean, it's it's going to be out there. And I think with us being Canadian, uh, we get so flooded with Crosby because he's Canadian and he is a superstar player. Yeah. And I think that adds to the fact that it's it's over overdone, overused. He, he's everywhere whenever it's hockey. It's always about Crosby. I, I am mm-hmm. so glad Pierre Maguire no longer works for TSN because I was so tired of hearing him basically worshipping the guy as a god. Well, he was doing the same thing with Taves this series, so you probably, you probably wouldn't have minded that too much. I think you're probably a Johnny Taves fan because I think most people are. But Oh, yeah. I, I've always said that John, Jonathan Taves had a much better Olympics than Crosby. He did. Well, that's a discussion for another time, but Jonathan yeah. Tate was the best forward for Canada at that Olympics. He was the best forward at the Olympics. Absolutely. And it was him, it was he, it was because of him that they won the gold, if anything. But yeah. Crosby did score the goal, but whatever. One goal in the entire enough. tournament does not make you the best player. I'm sorry. Yeah, but anyways. <laughs> so, so <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with mine first, because I've yeah. got it written down. I said I can't pick the Penguins, and I didn't. I'm going with the Bruins, but I am giving it seven games. This is going to be a shootout. I do not predict very many low-scoring games unless Tuka Rask stands on his head because this these two teams are just going to shoot the puck. And vokun has been great. I'm not going to deny that. But he's a backup goalie. He's going to crack. And I think the yeah, Bruins are going to do that because they forecheck so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I saw that firsthand with the Leafs. They forecheck very well, and they are no pussies on the back end. Chara yeah. will hit anything that moves. He'll hit Crosby. He'll hit Malkin. He'll hit Aginla. You know, like any one of those players are going to come in and they're going to be facing Chara. Like I guarantee Chara gets almost 33 minutes a game. Oh, guaranteed. So yeah, I, I, I pick the Bruins and I pick them in seven. I, I think it's going to be a, a shoot them out, <laughs> light them up type of series. Yeah, I'm actually going to also go with the Bruins in seven. Just because I think it's going to come down to the fact that the Penguins do not have goaltending. And I think you can only outscore your mistakes for so long. Pittsburgh got to play the Islanders in the first round. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Nabokov is a sieve. And the games are yep. still close. Yep. And Nabokov didn't play well. And I, I think it, everyone everyone would agree that Nabokov was awful. And the Penguins still managed to barely scrape out of that series. And then against Ottawa, Ottawa doesn't have very much depth of forward. Uh, they have a lot of kids who this is probably their first time in the playoffs first and going playoffs, deep in the yeah, playoffs. Guaranteed. So, I mean, they were able to outscore the mistakes there because Ottawa just didn't have the firepower to, to stick it out with Pittsburgh. But I don't think that they're going to have the, – they won't be able to outscore their mistakes against Boston. I think Boston's a too good a team. Yeah. And they're just they're, – I think Pittsburgh, they're just they're not deep on the back end. I, I mean, as deep as you'd think a team like that would be. I mean, I think they're just – other than their top 3D, there's just nothing there for me. And yeah. I think Volkun's not, not there. He's, he doesn't have the ability to steal a series. No, and, and, I, I, and I don't think that Flurry Flurry going in cold is a disaster for them. Yeah, well, so uh, I believe one of the uh, I think it was um, I want to say that it was Bob McKenzie. I'm pretty sure it was Bob McKenzie, but I'm not 100 percent sure. He said one of the keys for Ottawa in that series was to get to Vokun and get Flurry in that because if Flurry had to go in net, Ottawa had a huge chance of winning that series. Yes, because Flurry and and we've discussed this at length at n- numerous times. A lot of people classify him as a top 10 goaltender. I wouldn't even classify him as that. Some people classify him as a top 5 goalie. I I can't do that. He's not a great goalie. He's had great teams around him. Um, he, like, like you were saying, they, they score so much, but they also give up a lot. The, we look at the series last year against Philadelphia. Those games were like 8-6, 6-5. Yeah, it was just 
it was like exciting, exciting. It was to watch. exciting to watch because there were so many goals. It was and no lead was safe. I mean, I think at one point Philadelphia had like a four goal lead and then it was evaporated. They were down f- six four and then won the game eight six. It was like you know, like, it, it was just ridiculous. It was like uh, what do they call it? Shinny hockey almost. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> it's just like you shoot the puck, it's gonna go in because that, that's how it is. And you can't be like that. Like if you're going to be um. If you're going to be relying on goaltending, which you need to do in the playoffs, Pittsburgh's not where the goaltending is. No, I don't think so. Which is a shame, because you think at the beginning of the year, when you're looking at their flurry Vokun tandem, you're like, okay, well, that looks pretty good. Yeah. But it doesn't all of a sudden. I mean, Vokun, don't get me wrong, I mean, Vokun's been been stellar in the playoffs, and the only reason he's not right near the top is because he hasn't played the amount of games. He's only played, uh, I think... Um, well, he's only won six games, so that tells you right there that he did not play all the games in the first round. Yeah. But he 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 did play all five games in the second round. I think he came in in game three of the Islanders series, if I'm not mistaken. That's not bad. So, I mean, he, they played, so he played, what, nine games? He's a six yeah, I think three so. record. Yeah. So... Uh, it, it's not horrible, and his numbers are pretty good. But again, I just think the forecheck of Boston is going to be so huge. And as you said, the defense in Pittsburgh is not great beyond the top three guys. Well, if Boston can get their top two lines going, if they can get that Krejci line going and the Bergeron line going at the same time, mm-hmm. because their their bottom two lines of depth is fantastic for Boston. I mean, they yeah. got some. They got the best bottom two lines in the league. As far as I'm concerned, if they're if if they're humming the two, like I'm, they don't score as much as Pittsburgh's third, third line has the potential to score, but they do everything else so so well that if they can get those two top lines going at the same time, they're going to win the cup. Yeah. It's just like can can will they get it going though? I mean, like Milan Lucic is like the prototype power forward now. I mean, he's so they pretty much have like the best upcoming power forward in the league, plus his clone and Nathan Horton. On one line with Krejci, who's leading all playoff scorers right now with 17 points, and then on the second line you got Bergeron, who's probably the best two-eight forward in the league. Um, well, yeah, and, and and to go with the uh, the points, I mean, uh, David Krejci's been setting up a lot of goals, and then you have uh, almost anybody else can score when he's setting them up, and then you look at yeah. the, the the plus minus of Boston. I mean, the, in in the statistics, they have four of the top five guys, which oh, means they do, yeah. They're, they're, which means they're scoring goals, but they're not allowing goals. And you, you just, like, like I said, Volkun's numbers are pretty good. 1.85 goals against, which is, I mean, it's not bad in nine games. That's less than two goals a game. That's where you want it in the playoffs. Yeah. But at the same time, he's only played nine games, whereas Tuka Rask has, has played every single game that Boston's played. He has his eight wins. Um, yeah, I think with Tuka Rask too. I think he's had a couple of, of pretty bad games that have skewed his stats in the wrong direction, the uh, and he's still got pretty good stats. Yeah, but he's, I think he's, uh, had a he's got of a bad games. two two twenty two goals against. Uh, it's above two. You want it to get mm-hmm. you want to get it below two, but like you said, it, especially in that Leaf series, he had a couple of bad games, and I mean the Leafs pushed them to seven and could have easily have won that game, like. Man, this is a guy that was heartbroken there with that final two minutes there. Yeah, that's a that's a bad way to that's a way to lose a game. <laughs> so I mean, he's played well when he's really needed to be. Um, I was wrong about Vokun. He's played seven games. Oh he's, yeah, I got the stats here too. Really. Yeah. So, uh, but still, seven games, uh, which is the same amount as Reimer played <laughs> when you think about it. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, he's done very well, but I still think that you put you you put that four check that Boston has, and I think they they showed it again even in round two, which I think is why they won the series in five games, and they could have easily have won that in four games. That yeah. could have been a sweep so so easily. Mm-hmm. Um, Boston just really rolled over uh, the uh, Rangers. It yeah, it wasn't even close. Yeah. I, I don't know if you had a chance to watch some of those games, but watching Henrik Lundqvist the net for the Rangers was absolutely incredible. And if it wasn't for <laughs> Henrik Lundqvist, those are blowouts. Oh, absolutely. I, I did watch a couple of them. I didn't watch a lot of them. I, I Most of the, the series I followed most in the second round were the uh, Chicago-Detroit series and the uh, Kings-San um, Jose Sharks series. I, I did oh, not. I, I, conference. 
Yeah, I know. Western Conference. I, well, I've said to this to you in the past, too. I said, uh, like, um, the Western Conference holds such dominance in um, Stanley Cup wins that I said it last year with the goaltending that was in the Western Conference. I said, whoever comes out of the West is going to win the Cup. I was right. Yeah. Uh, this year, I'm saying the same thing. Whoever comes out of the West wins the Cup. Yeah, I mean, I think the, as a general rule, the Western Conference is a better conference than the Eastern Conference. There's more, there's better there's teams there. next year. It'll be an interesting. It'll be interesting next year with because you moved Detroit, Detroit and Columbus, Columbus over to the East, yeah. And I don't think Columbus is a bad team. They're a lot better well, than they were. So it makes it kind of makes a. I'm curious to see how next year is going to look with that one that Toronto. That division. Uh, that Boston division is going to send six teams to the playoffs. I guarantee it. Almost like I can almost like 100 percent guarantee that that division sends six of the eight teams to the playoffs because the only two teams that are going to get in the other division in the Eastern Conference are the two the top two that have to get in. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, It'll be curious. Oh, it's going to be so interesting next year. I'm still leery on it, but I th- I really believe that, that it's going to end up being six and two for that Eastern I, I, Conference. It, could, it, could, it depends on what shakes out. This offseason is going to be really oh, important, too, yeah, in terms of uh, Detroit what's going to shake down. in a lot into the Eastern Conference. I mean, they've dominated the Eastern Conference a lot. So you throw them in the Eastern Conference, so they're going to be playing more games in the East – then in the West, uh, that that changes the dynamic right there. Yeah, well, I mean, they're in the middle of a sort of like a pseudo rebuild too. So pseudo we'll see how that's going. Agreed. I agree. I mean, they're they're getting younger, uh, and and that started last year with the retirement of um, Nicholas Nick uh, Nicholas Lidstrom. Yeah, well, that's why the season's such a success because no one gave them a chance and they made it to the second round, which is kind of strange to say Detroit getting eliminated in the second round is a success. A success, but it's a success. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just like. Uh, that's how I feel about the Leafs. They they made the playoffs this year. They took Boston to a game seven, which they could have easily have won. To yeah. me, that's a success. It was yeah, oh. a heartbreaking loss, but that's a success. And there there was a lot of things in there that that was fixable, and mm-hmm. not with a lot of, um, not with a lot of tweaking. I mean, Reimer showed he can be a number one goalie this year. Yeah, well, I think it's important for teams to lose. I mean, you look at. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a different set of circumstances, but in 2008, Pittsburgh lost to Detroit in the finals. You know, they just didn't have what it took to take that last little bit of push. And then next year, the next year they come back and they win the cup. And if you look at 2009, uh, Detroit played Chicago in the conference finals. Mm-hmm. Chicago. And Chicago said coming out of that series that they were shell shocked because they, the, it, the, the quality of competition just changed. That ramped it up to another level and they lost yeah. in five games. It wasn't this relatively close series. No, nope. but it it changed the way that they look at it, and they won the cup the next year. I'm not saying that playing Detroit is going to make you win the cup, but I, <laughs> examples of that from well, the no, Eastern it, Conference. It, as well. I mean, using that example is is good. It's a very good example. Uh, I, I just when, when Pittsburgh won the cup, we both know that the, the, those fluky saves by Flurry were. Oh, I don't want to even get into it. The <laughs> series beforehand, Patrick Sharp speared Lichterm in the, in the junk, and Lichterm had to have surgery, and Pavel Datsuk was playing with a fractured foot. Oh. It was just it was a, it was a whole well, bunch of... That, that should have been a Detroit series. It really should have been a, a repeat win for Detroit that year. Oh, well. That's, Anyways, that, that was that year. <laughs> We're in this year. Yeah, sorry. Right. We keep going all over the map. We do, but you know what? That's fine. That's what... It, it, when you're talking about certain things, you, you relate it back, and that's what that's what that's what happens. So, uh, both these series uh, the, the, for the conference finals get started on Saturday, uh, and then it's going to go. They're going to alternate. Uh, so, LA and Chicago are going to actually play back to back. They're going to play Saturday, Sunday, and then it's going to alternate back and forth. Um, so, the layoff for the teams like Boston and Pittsburgh. Which is an advantage. Like, I mean, um, Los Angeles and Chicago have a bit of a layoff because it is what a three day layoff for well four days for Chicago or, or LA yeah. and three days for Chicago. But mm-hmm. I mean, Boston and Pittsburgh have already been off for almost well, I, a week. I think in the playoffs you want to be playing as often as possible. Exactly. I don't really think you want to be resting, and I. I I mean, I don't know. The Eastern Conference is a little bit of a different because there's not much travel in the East, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like a team needs. But in this Western Conference, these these two series, Actually, there was there was not very much travel either. Yeah, L.A. versus San Jose, both in the same state. For and Detroit, Chicago. That's there. Chicago, that's Detroit. Bus ride. Chicago, yeah. 
Chicago's the closest proximity team to Detroit, I think. Maybe Columbus is, but they're. I mean, you don't get much closer than that as far oh, as Detroit oh, goes. Exactly. Um, so this conference final though is gonna. I think it hurts Chicago a little bit because of the travel. It does. Well, it does. Los and Angeles is used to the travel because they are a Western Conference team that plays on the West Coast. They're not just a Western Conference team that's kind of in the East or in the middle. Uh, so they're used to having to travel to the middle of the country. Um, yes. Obviously, Boston Pittsburgh is going to be. I mean, again, it's another hop, skip, and a jump. So that one's going to. Yeah, we'll see. Travel's not going to affect that series, but uh, Chicago could be affected by the the travel. But again, uh, Chicago's a good team. They've been a good team all year. And they get home ice, mm-hmm. right? So even if there is all that travel, I mean, at least they get to go. Where's LA? Let's say Chicago and LA play seven game series, and LA's traveling back and forth, and then they go from Chicago right to oh, Pittsburgh, yeah. Boston. I mean, that's good. That would hurt them. Yeah, I think the Chicago will be okay. Starting on Saturday, uh, Los Angeles is obviously not going to make the trip until Friday. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it does give them a, a little bit of a break. I think that series will be a lot more interesting than the Boston-Pittsburgh series, which I think is going to start out a little slow. Um, both well, teams have been sure. off for too long. Uh, Boston's played more recently than Pittsburgh because uh, Boston went uh, – Oh, no, they both went five games, didn't they? Or did Boston go six? Uh, I think the Boston series ended up going six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm... So, so Boston went six games. So they have played more, a lot more recently than Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh really handled uh, San, uh, San Jose. No, they handled the Senators very, very quickly. Uh, it was over with. So, And they had no injury, so it wasn't like they needed the time off to rest, guys. So it's not playing. You can practice all you want. Unless you're in that game time situation, uh, you're not. I, I think it's going to start off slow. I think it's going to be a, a, the first period is going to look like crap. Well, probably, yeah. I, I, would, I would say, I, I don't think, I think it'll be more tentative. I don't think that it's going to be a lot for a lack of trying. There's going to be a lot of a lot of effort. It's just going to be more of a tentative effort oh, yeah. uh, in terms of, of uh, you know, not wanting to make that, that costly mistake. Because, I mean, you don't want to be the team that makes that stupid mistake. And I'm sure Boston's going to want to try and engage very physically. Um, they're not going to be as interested. They're probably more in- interested in getting it mixed up, you know, post whistle, whereas Pittsburgh probably just wants to try and get their, you know, get their legs going and get their speed game going. But it'll be a little bit hard in the first couple of games. Absolutely. I, think. I, I agree that uh, the, the feistiness of the Bruins, that's why I, I, another reason why I like the Bruins in the series, I think the feistiness of the Bruins is going to get under the skins of some of the Pittsburgh players. I mean, yeah, they have they have their their few guys on, on Pittsburgh that are that are there for that, but they're not going to be playing against the guys on on Boston at the same time. Boston's guys like that are going to be going up against the Crosby line and the Malkin line and you know Aginla's line. They're, they're going to be antagonizing them. So exactly, you know, you're and one thing I like about Boston's chances here. Is they've they've they're used to rolling all four lines. I find Pittsburgh sometimes cuts down to two and three lines too quickly. Why? Well, yeah, I they're think good. The, don't get me wrong, but they cut down to them too quickly. I think that's because they find themselves in some trouble. I think they find themselves in some trouble um, in games, and they've they've. I mean, I think Pittsburgh more often than they should goes to more. But they do a two line attack where they just kind of swap the Malk and Crosby yeah. lines exactly. out for each other. Exactly. But they're young. Like those are young lines. It's not like yeah. they're a bunch of old guys, right? Well, so it, it's true. Uh, you do get the minutes up on those guys, uh, but like you said, they're not young guys. Yeah, or they're not old guys. There, there are a lot of young guys on the, on those two lines. And uh, you look at, um, like we said, the, they have three solid lines that can score. Yeah, a lot of times you get that rollover where it's just it's the Crosby line, and then it's the Malcolm line, and it's back to the Crosby line, back to the Malcolm line, and then the third line gets a chance, you know. Yeah, then they'll put up the the side of line. I I think that uh, maybe against the Bruins though they'll be less inclined to do that because I was just thinking about it. I mean, against Ottawa they did it a lot, but Ottawa didn't really have much, mm-hmm. and I think that Ottawa's bottom lines were sort of about playing Pittsburgh's, especially in the three hole. I think that I think that the side of line was having was having a lot of the trouble with with Ottawa's third line, so I think no. there was a lot of incentive to go with the two line sort of um, switch up because it was harder for Ottawa to match the top two lines with Pittsburgh's top two. Yeah, versus, like, yeah, like I mean, you, you've got to put um, you don't want to put your fourth line on, on, but you almost have to in a way to try and get some grit into there. 
But then yeah. you're you're giving up goals because I mean they're obviously not as skilled as the guys who can who can uh, stop a Crosby, which are very few. Yes. Unfortunately, but uh, you know you, you need you need players who can play that two way type of game. Yeah. Against an elite player and Boston. Boston's got one. And Boston's got one. They've got a couple. I think actually they could probably do that. Yeah, well, they do. I, I think but, that Julian would probably prefer to have the Bergeron, Bergeron yeah, line matchup exactly against the Crosby line, Crosby if if he can. And I'm sure that Bilesman will try to get that matchup, try oh, and get away yeah, from that. Well, and up. he'll get he'll like Pittsburgh has home ice advantage, so they're gonna have that advantage in the in the in the first two games. Yeah. But uh, look out when it goes to Boston. And sorry to we'll say it, but a, a one good hit on. Crosby by Chara, and we might not see Crosby for the rest of the series. Uh, yeah, I don't think that Chara. I don't think that that's going to happen. I mean, Crosby's looking better. He's got his. I think he's been cleared well, yeah. uh, to play without his jaw shield on. Oh, so has he better, been, yeah, have, he's had yeah. the time to heal. I guess that's the only advantage that they've had with this long break is that. Well, and, and that jaw. kind of it impairs your vision to wear that thing on the bottom oh, yeah. of your, on your face. So, I, I mean, having that off will make a huge difference in his game. He'll be able to see the puck a little bit better at his feet. Yeah, so I think it's probably less likely that he'll have to look down at it. He's just got such good vision, even with that stupid thing on. That once he's got that that face shield off, he'll be yeah, he'll be gravy. I, it's a tough. I mean, I if Pittsburgh had goaltending, it's kind of funny how yeah. the cap era sort of works. I yeah, mean, you've got it, two teams, really two teams that are absolutely dominant up front, and but they just have no goaltending. Like if Chicago had a goalie, or if Pittsburgh had a goalie. I mean, it'd be, it'd be so easy to predict these playoffs. We should just be like, okay, well, they're winning the cup, obviously, but they just, they, there's question marks, man. It's the salary yeah. cap. And and that's the other thing, too. Like, I mean, they're, you, I look at these four teams, and of the four teams, the weakest goaltending is in Pittsburgh. I would agree. Um, they're, they're a number one seed, but I still think the weakest goaltender is in Pittsburgh. I mean, you got two Garask. In Boston, who's who's played really well this year in uh, in his first full year as a starting goaltender with two, with um, Tim Thomas gone, mm-hmm. uh, you've got Jonathan Quick who didn't have a stellar regular season, but he's having almost as good as playoffs as he did last year when they won the cup. Yeah, he's really he's been playing well. And then Corey Crawford's been great all year. I think Corey. It's surprising that Corey Crawford's and, been great and all honestly, year. Honestly, with, with Chicago. I would not hesitate to get Ray Emery in there if he's good. Well, I mean, if, if I'm, I mean, I think now it's you can't put Ray Emery in. I think it's too well, late no, no, now. no. But I mean, like if something were to happen, oh yeah, God forbid to yeah. Crawford, I'd be totally comfortable putting Ray Emery in because he played again. He played really well this year. Yeah, he has. He played. He did play well. He's. A, I think he's a free agent. I wonder what happens to him at the end of the year. It will be an See, interesting, that interesting may be tidbit. the veteran presence that a team like Toronto might want. Instead of getting somebody like uh, Luongo who wants to be a starter, I think I, think, so. I think they've got their starter. I think Reimer it can be a starter in this league. Uh, I don't know if Scrivens can. Uh, not enough of him to know. But like if you send Scrivens back down to the Marlies, let him play another year there, and bring in a guy like Emery who can mentor uh, Reimer a little bit, who yeah, doesn't I- mind playing the backup role. Well, and, I think there's a lot of goal. I'm surprised they let Jiggy go. Like I thought Jiggy would been perfect for that. I, I, no, you're right. I think Jiggy was probably perfect for that. But at the time, uh, I it was bad management. It really was. Yeah, um, but, but they're gonna have to figure it. I, I don't think Ben Scrivens is good as a as an initial caliber goaltender. I think he was okay this year, but I, I, there wasn't much uh, expectation he, on him to I, do I well. Think so this year was um, well, he he did he did okay. I would classify him as maybe an average or a below average goalie uh, yeah. this year, but last year when he was called up, he was uh, phenomenal. But he only played like a few games, and you know at that time people didn't figure him out. Like even now, people on Reimer say you know shoot high glove side, but he's working on that, and you saw that in the Boston series. He was working on it throughout the whole series. Yeah, so, I think that that whole shoot high glove side thing is just ridiculous. Yeah, shoot high glove side on an NHL goalie, they'll let it in every time. No, that's not how it works. Yeah, exactly. Love Canadian so, media. <laughs> I know, I know. So, like, when I look at these four goalies um, and four teams, even LaBarbera in um, in LA, I wouldn't. Uh, LA's Bernier. 
or Bernier, sorry, not La Barbara. That's okay. La Barbara was LA a couple. He years was ago. LA a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but no, even Bernier in LA, like I mean, he didn't play a lot this year, but when he played, he played pretty well. So I mean, I mean, I'd I'd hope not to have to go to him, but I'd be a little bit more confident going to him than going to like say Flurry with Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. Boston, who is their backup? I don't even know who their backup is. Who Boston? Yeah. It's uh, Anton Kuboden. Oh, that's right, Kuboden. Or Dobby. I'd be, I'd be you a little wanna, bit. If you want to. <laughs> I'd be yeah, a little shaky about Dobby. wanting to have him in net. <laughs> I think he's actually pretty good. I like that they call him Dobby because they just fans of Harry Dobby? Potter. I think that's cool, yeah. <laughs> well, but anyway, yeah, no, he's good. Kubonen's a good goalie. He's young. He's well, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. He, wasn't this his rookie year? Uh yes, yeah, so I think it would have been his. He would have officially burned his rookie year yeah. this year. Yeah, because he he was he was up. Um, yeah, I'd be a little bit more shaky putting him in against Pittsburgh than, say, any of the other teams putting in their backup goalie other than Pittsburgh itself. So th- th- looking at it like that, I would say, again, Chicago-LA is going to be a great series. Uh, I-, I said that that's probably going to be a homer series. Boston-Pittsburgh, I- I'm going with the Bruins because of the goaltending. Even though Vokun's played well, I, th- I still like the goaltending in Boston a lot better. I think we agree. I think that we uh, basically our predictions agree with I each believe, other. I believe they do. I think we both picked Bruins in seven. And, and I was tempted. Uh, I wanted to stay with Pittsburgh, so I predicted them to go to the finals at the beginning yeah. of the, this whole thing. Yeah, you did. My, you did. my final four, actually. I think I nailed it, right? But uh, oh, yeah, you went perfect four and zero in this round, so obviously you nailed that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I picked Pittsburgh to go all the way. But I just, yeah, based I on what I've seen, mm. I believe we both picked Chicago to win the cup. So yes, I, that's yeah, still we, <laughs> yeah, I think we're still okay there. We're still I just okay think there. that I think that Pittsburgh can do it. I just, I just like that goaltending situation. I don't like it, and I thought that maybe they'd have enough depth to kind of like overcome that sort of goaltending. But it's just been it's been so bad that you can't even overlook it. Like it's just. And and I mean, you're right. Like Pittsburgh does have depth, but again, I really think that the four check of Boston is going to come into play here, and then they're going to get to Vokun. And I don't know what uh, Dan's – I can't ever say his last name. Bielsma? Bielsma, yeah. Dan Bielsma. Dan Bielsma. I don't know if he want, if he's confident even going to Flurry. I don't even know if the team would be confident going to Flurry at this to, at this point. I think Bielsma would have no problem going to Flurry if he had to. I think that's just the way that, that, that the team works that's, and that he works. That he's, yeah. he's more of a – I don't think he's the kind of guy to rake his players over the coals. So, I mean – once Flurry was and Flurry's a Cup winner, right? So yeah, that's, I mean you can't you can't be hesitant to put a former Cup winner in goal. You know what I mean? It's just uh, well, that you gotta have some faith in your players at some point here. And if, if you put Flurry in and he sucks, then you're just like, well, Jesus, now we're in trouble. But I mean, you can't really make you can't if you're a coach of a like a team like Pittsburgh, you can't start doubting your players. You're no, that's gonna, that's true. That's true. That's then you're John Tortorella, and then you just and you're fired. <laughs> and you're fired. John Tortorella got fired today. He sure did. He got fired so good. He'll never get hired again. You don't, think, I, you don't think there's anybody out there that would... I mean, not this year, but you don't think down uh, maybe a year, like not uh, what next team, year? What team would... If you were a manager or a GM... <laughs> if team, I was a GM, no, I wouldn't hire him. But you of know any what? team in the league. Uh, there I may be a team out there that he goes to. I, I personally think he's going to be in media for a while. Because <laughs> uh, he's going to get a job good. in media again. You know that he will. People love talking to him. I don't think there's a market for him. I just like there's there's an opening and I I just I don't get it. I don't I don't. I think that Dallas Eakins is going to get hired though. This Sadly, year. yeah, I think uh, he's going to be pulled away from the uh, Toronto organization. Yeah, which is too bad for Toronto because he's some he's a pretty good AHL coach. He, he was an excellent AHL coach. I mean, it's a shame to let talent go like that. I mean, Randy Carlisle is a fantastic coach, so I'm not bagging on them for not hiring. No, 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 ex- exactly. I mean, they're not going to bring him up when you got Randy Carlisle, right? I mean. But as as far as like it, he he's pretty much like I mean he didn't win the cup with last year with the Marlies and they obviously didn't go to the finals this year but uh, he he brought that team two very deep playoff runs in a yes, row he and uh, he was very instrumental I think in uh, helping Nazem Kadri develop which is something that Brian Burke wanted when yeah. he was still the GM. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, I mean, like, and we saw flashes of brilliance from, from Kadri this year, and that's 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 on Eakins, man. 
And well, I think Weekins is a good. He's a good molder of young talent. Exactly. And, and so you bring him into a, a coaching situation where there are young guys. He's going to strive. Yeah, I think he'd be a good fit in Dallas. Personally, I, I know that he's interviewing that, in Vancouver. Yeah, he, he he's interviewed with Vancouver, but he's. But I, I don't believe the. Uh, I believe you're right because the, Dallas is a fairly young team. Like, I mean, the only other team I would have thought of would be maybe Colorado, but they just hired Patrick Waugh. Yeah, so, what a who is actually another uh, decent coach for young players. I mean, he did uh, really well with the uh, Quebec Rampart. So uh, yeah, he, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not a big fan up with them too. Well, of uh, course you're not a fan of him. One. He's he's a Colorado guy. You're no, not I mean, allowed to like Colorado I'm guys. Of, <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm not. I'm not that kind of. I when he when he <laughs> played for the Colorado Avalanche, I despised him. But, exactly. I, I mean. As a coach, I, I'm not a fan of him as a coach, yeah. I, I, especially after that. No, especially after well, that. Okay, one that that you know what that incident. Yeah, I, I agree that was that was overboard. But I mean, to to look at his record, I mean, the guy won 66 or 68 percent of his games as a yeah as a. I, I just coach. I I just I don't like when former players become GMs and they hire more former. Like I just I have this like sense of like they're creating this like buzz to sell tickets. So you, know, you make Sack the GM and you bring in Roy and you know Colorado did, did poorly with sales. They're trying to like reinvigorate the Colorado Avalanche brand, but I mean, you do that by hiring hockey people. You don't do it by, you know, mishmashing well, extra players. I mean, that's just the way I, I feel. But as being spoiled as a I'm actually going to quote Patrick Waugh here. To look at. I'm actually going to quote Patrick Waugh here. Um, he said that every coach in this league, I guarantee you, 100 percent of the time, had a rookie season. That's true. He said that, that is a good point. I, I you know I, I heard that I'm like. That's a damn good point because it, it's true. Every coach had to start somewhere, and and he even admitted, he goes, "Will I make mistakes? He's damn right I will, but this is an opportunity for me to show that I can coach." And I mean, you're right. Generally speaking, a lot of players who become coaches don't succeed very well. There are exceptions, and yeah. I think he's a possible one because of what he did in in Quebec. I mean, he really made that team. Uh, such a, a good team. He won a Memorial Cup with them, which, as we know, is one of the hardest things to do. Is actually win a Memorial. It's harder than winning the Stanley yeah. Cup. It's more, because, yeah, it is. It's quite difficult because you got because of what you got to go through. You got to win your league first, and then you go into a round robin tournament against the other two league champions plus the host city. So mm-hmm. it, it is one of the hardest trophies to win, and he's done that, and he's had a great record. With Quebec, like I, I, I can't remember what the exact percentage was, but I know it was in this mid to lit high 60s, and he had coached something like 600 and some odd games and won over 400 of them, or, or it was just a huge amount. I'm like, wow, I didn't know it was that good of a record. So. Yeah, you know, he was definitely his record definitely supports it. I'm just I, and and if he ends up being the if he was the best guy for the job, and that's how they felt, and that's one thing. I just you know they don't with like, I agree. I think Sackick brought him in specifically. Like especially yeah, I, when Sackick was named GM, I think he was he brought uh, Patrick Roy in specifically because of the connection they both have with the city, winning Stanley Cup yeah. there. And uh, maybe he wasn't the best guy for the job, but he could be because they are a young team. He's used to coaching young players, and maybe he develops into a, a good NHL coach. Or you know what? Maybe he we're here next year and we're saying, well, Patrick was fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'll get fired within a year. He's, he, they made him VP of Ops, too, I think. Uh, yeah, so VP of Hockey Operations, yeah. So I, I don't think he's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. How did that, Have you talked to Zach about it? What does he think? Uh, he's actually looking forward to it. I, it was the first thing I did. As soon as I saw that it was confirmed, because there was rumors that he was going there, and then, you know, as soon as it was confirmed, I sent him a message. I'm like, okay, you're like the only Colorado Avalanche fan I actually know. I know there's other fans out there, but you're the one I know. What do you think? And he goes... I think it's a good move because of, uh, what do you say? Uh, I think it was because of, uh, his connection with the city and the fact that it's a young team. Kind of what I was saying, like, because it's a young team, he's worked with young players before, it's a, a chance to succeed. It's not necessarily he's going to succeed, it's a chance to succeed. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, if that's how it's called, if that's how I mean, I'm always feels. optimistic. Look at the Toronto Blue Jays. I mean, you, you going into the season, they were like, Hey, we're, we're we've got like we've just signed some of the best players. We have made trades for some of the best players, and they're tanking. I think that I think I, I, if this this season is the official Blue Jays fans need to now approach with cautious optimism <laughs> instead yeah. of this on like <laughs> but, balls out optimism. Exactly, but and and see that's the thing. I, I think uh, in any sport, in any league, 
Um, you have to approach things with cautious optimism. You look at uh, football a couple of years ago, the dream team Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I remember they, that. They didn't even make the playoffs. Playoffs? <laughs> We're talking playoffs? That 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 division, that, that, that Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Cowboys division has enough failure to just hold. Like, if I, like, oh. That, that's, that's a whole just, different subject. <laughs> yeah. We could go on and on about that. So, uh, that's been the hockey playoff special. Uh, we kind of got sidetracked there at the end, but we got our predictions in. Round three starts Saturday. Conference uh, championships. We got the Chicago Blackhawks defeating the LA Kings all around except for the dice. The dice got the Kings. <laughs> we also have the Bruins defeating the Pittsburgh Penguins, and that is an all around. Even the dice picked that one. So I, I didn't think that would happen, but... We all got the Bruins in that series. Oh, I wonder what I, I'm curious to see what all the experts say, but yeah, so that's it. And I guess we'll uh, see if we're right in the next two yeah, weeks or next so. couple of weeks. We'll find out where we are, and hopefully we'll get back here for a Stanley Cup playoff prediction. Although we've already picked Chicago to win it, however, if they don't make it there, we'll have to make another pick. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll have to wait and fun. see. Yeah, we we've I got know. a couple of weeks before we we have to worry about that. Yeah. So I'd well, like to thank you, Joey, for coming on. Yeah, I've had a great time. Hopefully the recording works this time. I, I'm hoping so, too. It looked like it was – I, I triple-checked that. I'm, I'm hoping this – when this shuts down that it says recording has been saved because last time that kind of sucked. Yeah. There's so <laughs> much right. good material. It was. It was a lot of good material. And no way I could have – no way we could have both replicated that. No way. No way. Can't replicate no. that. But uh, so thank you for coming on. I'm uh, just going to wrap it up here, and uh, we'll see you next week, next Wednesday. Remember to stick, stay tuned on another podcast. We have three great shows, sometimes four when we get Teen Talk Thursdays back, plus the syndicated show, uh, Is This Thing On? So another Monday, Real Tuesday, Warlock Wednesday. This has been the NHL Playoff Prediction Special. I'm out. Thanks for listening to Another Podcast from AnotherPodcast.com. Don't forget to go on iTunes and or download right from AnotherPodcast.com. That's E-H-N-O-T-H-E-R Podcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at Another Podcast. Be sure to check back for tomorrow's show only on Another Podcast, your Canadian podcast network. AnotherPodcast.com, not a sponsor.